It's a bit boring. Yeah, yeah, yes. And another one. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Then the last one. Okay, I see. Then this one. In many countries, people get salaries. That is the amount of money you get paid at the end of a month for a month's worth of job. Uh, it can be predefined by governments like 40 hours a week and uh, that may be like seven, eight hours a day. Depends how many days of, the, of a week you work. So these are just numbers. I'm going to say that in some Western countries, including Canada, um, they calculate a, an individual's income based on a yearly money or the, the, a yearly accumulation of money that they gather. So someone might get very low number of $20,000 a year or a high number of $100,000 a year. And that's how they calculate their yearly income. Because then it's about tax and if it's deductible or not. I mean, that's a different topic. So I look very serious when we're talking about tax and income. Just relax. We are going to write a report, task one academic, and it's about income. And it's about income in a particular Western country. So let's begin. I need to say, welcome to IELTS Choose. The chart below, which is a bar chart, shows the number of households in the US by their annual income, annual yearly income, the money that they receive for the work they do in 2007, 11, and 15. So there are three years. They are four years apart, but that, I don't know if that carries any value or not. Let's look at the visual. Okay, from what I can see in the horizontal line, we have the three years. Then we have on the vertical line, some numbers, 10. What's 10? Number of households in millions. Oh, 10, for example, is 10 million households. And uh, this, this bar is uh, more than 25 million households. They are US households, by the way, not Canadian, not British, nothing. We're just focused on US households. In this year, in 2007, and this dark one is, aha, uh -huh. now I understand. There are five categories. Less than $25,000 uh, means uh, in one year, that individual or that family received uh, $25,000. That's a very, very low number. That's like a poverty line. And that's... Uh, it's very, it's very hard to live by that amount a year in the U.S. And then uh, we have the white one, 25,000 until just below 50,000. 50,000 is this middle one up to 75, almost 75, and 75 to almost 100 and 100 and more, 100 grand and more. Okay. I understand uh, the gist of this. I, I can say one significant point is this middle one. Look at it. It's about 22 million, 21, 22 million households. And as you can see, it almost did not change. I can safely say that it didn't change any in any shape or form it's, it basically remains stable that's one item one one significant item another item uh, i can see the difference between the first two groups 
you see the difference is maybe one million maybe one and a half million so the the difference is even not that high between these two columns that's another interesting thing another interesting thing about this darker grayish color which is about 75,000 all the way until 100 grand it never passed 15 million households in the three given periods in the three given years that's another significant point all right uh i um, oh yes of course you 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 should have yeah, I know. You're, you've already noticed. You're, you're shouting at your screen. Hey, Castro, Castro, this is the most significant one. This is the highest one. Yes, I noticed that. Yes, uh, 100 grand and more in 2015 is the highest number. And it's the highest number in the entire data set. And it's the highest number in 2015. It, uh, we also had the same pattern in 2007 with the highest number here but uh, not in 2011. In 2011, this group, the 25,000 to almost 50,000 was the highest one. All right, with that in mind, let's look at the candidate's response. There we go. The bar chart, all right, I need to have the bar chart side by side here before I start assessing it, so I'll be back. Okay, we're back and the chart is right next to us. So the bar chart, correct, illustrates the number of American families, correct, in five categories based on their income in 2007, 11, and 2015. I know if you look at the rubric, there is no comma here. My suggestion is to put a comma here. It is absolutely important for the clarity's sake to write the listing comma in, in full. So this one and another one with and, you need, you need to write the end and the year. Okay. The number of households whose salaries were less than $25,000 increased in 2015. Okay. Increased in 2015 compared to 2007. Uh, less than two, not not this one. This one, yes, increased in two thousand and fifteen compared to two thousand and seven. Yes, it increased, but is it a significant point? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it is really a, a significant point. It is correct though, but is it something that caught my eye? No. Okay. Let's continue. I'm. There are better overviews that we can write here. And it's not even about all the chart. It's about only the two years here. We are we're completely ignoring this one in the middle. I could find better overviews. Again, I gave you a couple of examples at the beginning. Three groups of families with income, with uh, incomes probably, less than 25,000, between 25,000 and 49,999. $49,999 and more than a hundred grand or a hundred thousand dollars made up the larger part of the community. I forgot to say that uh, because all these three years are in the past, 2007, 2011, 2015 are all in the past, we need to use past simple tense in the majority of our sentences made up the larger parts of the community larger than who i understand it is larger than the other community but the other community is not given here the reference is missing imagine i start a sentence and i tell you cheese is better that's my first that's a, that, it's a sentence cheese subject is the verb and better Okay, better, better, better than what? Better than butter, better than milk, better than meat. Cheese is better than what? There is no reference after that. 
And it's hard to start your sentence by saying there is no context yet. There is a little bit of context, and again, that's not enough. And uh, we keep assuming people see the diagram in front of them. That is not the idea of reporting. If you have the report and you write it next to it, if the report is visually there, then your manager is going to look at the visual, not your report. The report's idea is that you will be able to convert whatever you see into words. Remember that. So this, it's, it's an ability, it's a tool you need to have, it's a skill you need to master. So yeah, it's more than, is, is, is the larger part of the community. I understand it's again, larger than the other, the other remaining ones, but I needed to see them here. In 2007, the income of almost 25 million families was uh, less than $25,000. In 2007, the income of almost 25 million families was uh, less than 25,000, correct, dollars, which increased in 2011 and reached almost a little less than 30 million families. But in 2015, it decreased a little and reached about 27 million. With an income between 25,000 and 49,999 dollars, it's this white column, where approximately 26 million families in, 20, in 2007, okay, which reached 30 million in 2011, but slightly decreased in 2015, I hope we are not going to report all the other columns like this. It was this in 2007, then it went up or went down, and then in 2015 it reached this. I hope it, we are not going to repeat that pattern. Families whose income was more than 100 grand in 2007, but in 2011 it decreased to about 2.5 million. It decreased to about, this is 2.5 million, decreased is like this. It decreased, uh, not two, it decreased about 2.5 million, reaching some number. This, this is uh, a little problematic. It's a little bit, uh, the, the grammar, vocabulary, everything looks okay. Just, it didn't decrease two about a number. It decreased this much. Uh, not, it didn't reach a number, it decreased with this amount. That's the difference. Yet, but, why do we have both of them? It's like you use however and but all at the same sentence. However, but, this is overuse. We need one of them. For example, we can get rid of but and say yet, in 2015, with the biggest change, it reached about 33 million. Yes, with the, the biggest change. So I guess in this paragraph, we just focused on the first, second, and the last bars in the diagram. And we just reported what was in 2007, what happened in 2011, and what we ended up with in 2015. It's a bit boring. Yeah, yeah, yes. Another one. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Then the last one. Okay, I see. Then this one. Okay. I'll continue. Next paragraph. Families with incomes between $50,000 and $74,000? No, $74,999. This is not correct. 50,000 and 74,999. And 75,000 and 99,999 did not change much. Okay. Oh, I see. So, this is, it's a bit weird, but the previous paragraph was about things that changed, 
but this one is about things that remained almost stable or changed not much so first paragraph the items that changed a lot this one the items that did not change let's read the number of families whose income was between 50,000 and 74,999 oh gosh dollars did not change during the three years um yeah that's that's my point that's one of the significant points i also pointed out that this one this middle one remained constant in the three years and was always slightly more than 25 million families but the group whose income was between 75,000 and 999 oh gosh five nines dollars decreased a little in 2011 but increased again in 2015 and reached 15 million families okay i mean we we have this pattern of reporting data in a me rather mechanical way like 2007 it was this in 2011 it happened this thing happened, it increased, decreased, whatever, and we reached this number in 2015. And we pretty much repeated this pattern five times for five bars. It's very boring. We don't have boring as an assessment criterion. So it's rather mechanical. We don't have a, a, a huge variety of grammatical structures to see here. We, we, we just have some sentence structures and some words last one the most common change was related to income of more than a hundred thousand dollars the income of families with more than a hundred thousand dollars the income of fifty thousand dollars to seventy four thousand nine hundred dollars was almost unchanged okay you know what we could do we, we could group some of these some of these numbers instead of rep reporting them individually we could come up with a middle line um, for instance we could say if the 50,000 is the middle mark and it remained unchanged so that's good that could go into either the introduction or conclusion and then we could group these two and we we could say that the households whose mon whose income was below 50,000 and those whose income was above 75,000. And we could create two paragraphs based on those, and we could basically discuss them. Same strategy, because above 75, you can see that's the highest difference, and it also had the highest change throughout the period, especially with this 100 grand and more, versus the first two columns remained pretty much stable, especially with their differences, and they maintained that throughout. They, the number of families increased a little bit and maybe decreased both of them. So they appeared, they had the same approach, but they ended up with different numbers. Uh, I, we could structure our paragraphs like that. Just a thought, just one way to do that. Uh, at this point, there isn't much to say. Let me go back to the original view and uh, we will look at the candidates band descriptors okay we're back so there is nothing left but to look at the band descriptors and here we are okay you see some transitions were mechanical simply because uh, we we were reporting data the same way five times it's it's the, the it's not faulty there is nothing wrong with that but when you report when anybody when any candidate starts reporting five data points in the same way you're bound to get mechanical there you you don't have a wide range of vocabulary we don't have a wide range of grammatical structures to use we cannot change sentences in any shape and form that we would like to do or we can with our first languages maybe the first language is chinese or indian um, i don't know or polish whatever it is but we are not able to change them and then 
it becomes mechanical for an English reader. Also, we had an issue with one referencing when we said it's more than. We didn't say even then. It's, it's just more. Again, not, it's clear in our heads, but it's not clear on the paper. It's important. It needs, it needs to be clear. Clarity is the key here. Remember that you are writing for somebody who you have never met in your life, who comes from a completely different country, who, who lives in the other side of the planet, and that individual is going to read and is probably not going to meet you in person ever again, and is going to spend only five minutes, maybe seven something minutes on your task. That, that's all. So clarity matters. We should not assume in our heads that things that are very clear here is clear for everyone. That's not how writing works. And also, we had uh, one maybe inaccurate data point. And also, I still do not like the appropriate reporting of the data. It was, it was not, it was very boring. I, I said, I, I complained that it's rather boring. And I, we could have used more appropriate way to report the data. One, I, one of them I just suggested. There are other ways. There are other approaches, of course. And uh, we had good overviews, relatively good overviews, not, not ideal. And uh, as for vocabulary, uh, yeah, we were limited to the number of words that we had. And they did not impede communication, but they weren't ideal either. And uh, we, we really didn't see many errors. The majority of them, if this wanted to be a higher score, then we needed to see some other less common lexical items. The same thing goes with grammar, although grammar stands at a better uh, standing, at a, at a better position right now with a better score. This is a balanced six because uh, with a little bit of policy transformation uh, or a policy reform, let's say, we could get a higher score, but we just kept our sentences in this repetitive structure and we ended up with something relatively safe. If six was the ideal score, then congrats, you got the score. Six, you, you have it. Your sentences were safe and relatively error-free. So, but if you wish to get a higher score, the next step would be to change the policy a little bit and try to come up with a logic that works with different um, sentences and different visuals. And that requires a little bit of practice and feedback. Just watching these videos, understanding how other people give feedback on other candidates' task ones or task twos will, uh, will definitely help. Anyway, thank you for watching. If uh, you wish to see other samples like this assessed, you know where to click. You can consider subscribing and as always I hope I'll be assessing your task one or task twos later on. Take care.